Walt Disney's Casey at the Bat. This is the story of a player who was the greatest of the great. He stood head and shoulders above all the other players, a giant of tower of strength and a true pillar to his team. Strong as an ox, endowed with a winning smile and the abilities of ten lesser men, he was adored by many of fan. He was none other than the mighty Casey of the famous Mudville Nine. The mighty Casey popped the stitches on more baseballs than most batters ever even hit. Whenever he came to the plate, he would always let the first two pitches go by on purpose. Strike one. Strike two. But when the time came for strike three, Casey would tire of toying with the pitcher. Grim determination would set in. He would grind his teeth together, and his furious glare said he wanted to murder the ball. Then came the pitch. Casey swung his bat with the power of a hurricane. When Casey's bat connected with the ball, Hats blew off from the shock, and everyone ducked down low. Terrified birds flapped, and people's peanuts flew out of their bags. If the ball didn't simply explode into a small cloud of horsehide flakes, it was found far outside the stadium. When it was found at all, it wasn't hard to prove which balls were from the mighty Casey's hits. They'd be completely flattened by his mighty bat. Casey was great, but his team as a whole was a different story. Poor Flynn was always getting the bat tangled in his oversized mustache. The bat would spin in the wind, and the confused Flynn would take off like an airplane. And as for Jimmy Blake, his nickname was Cake because he always crumbled at the plate. The favorite trick among other players was to stick a match in Jimmy Blake's shoe while he was at bat. Then they'd light it to wake him up. Blake got his only hits when his shoe was on fire. Mighty Casey was the hero of the team that fateful season when the Mudville 9 tied for first place. Ah uh, yes, it was a proud team. A little shaky if it weren't for Casey, but a mighty proud team just the same. Proudest of all, of course, was Casey himself. It was the day of the great championship game. I'll tell you the story as it was told to me. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood 4-2 to two with one more inning left to play. Then when Cooney died at first, and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could get a whack at that, we'd put up even more money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu and the latter was a cake. So upon the stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for it seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single, to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and the men saw what occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second, and Flynn a hugging third. Then from five thousand throats, and more 
there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley. It rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain, recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was an ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when, responding to the chairs, he lightly doffed his hat, no stranger in the crowd could doubt t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. And then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurling through the air. And Casey stood a-watching in a haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball and heat had sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, shouted someone in the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said straight to. Fraud, cried the Madden thousands, and Echo answered fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain. And they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. The end.